Well, this morning I was, I was walking through the park and there was a, a couple in their 20s and they were walking hand in hand. One of them had a bottle of wine in the other hand, opened. And obviously the morning you're not really supposed to wear black tie, but I thought today I'm going to wear black tie in solidarity with all the people who have not been home yet. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Michael Coroche. I'm the founder of La Boutique and the author of Modern Black Tie. So I'm a, I'm a black tie specialist. But La Boutique, I really focus on, on making bow ties and cummerbunds as well, so black tie accessories. So I started La Boutique in 2011. That was back in France, back in the southwest of France. I was wearing bow ties back then, mostly vintage ones and casual ones. And during one of my trips to Paris, I went to all the menswear stores that I can possibly find, but I couldn't find any bow ties that I liked. So when I came back home, I decided to just start making them. So I took a piece of paper, I drew what I thought was the shape of a bow tie, and I, I just started sewing. And then I just kept making them over and over, and, and I had no training in, you know, in sewing or designing, so I learned everything the hard way. They are one of the most important parts of the outfit, but at the same time, black tie is a whole uniform. So every single part is important. So it's just as important to get your shoes right as it is to get your suit right, your shirt, your bow tie, or even your socks. So funnily enough, I did write a book about uh, black tie, the first book that's dedicated entirely to black tie. So the dress code has been going on for 150 plus years and no one ever wrote any kind of guide. I think black tie should be approachable. I think that's, that's one of the first rules for me. Sometimes it's seen as elitist, when actually black tie, I think especially nowadays, is all about celebration and having fun. I grew up in the countryside. Very quiet, it's very outdoor, so I'm, I'm I was actually very far from this whole, this whole world of you know, menswear and black tie, etc. Which is maybe one of the reasons why I'm trying to make it a bit more accessible because I was one of these people to whom it wasn't accessible. As a bow tie specialist, I would probably say wearing a pre-tied bow tie. Just learn how to tie it. Just learn once. It's like lacing your shoes. I've been wearing Gazianos for years. Physically, the only stores that actually sells my whole collection is Gaziano and Girling. I support them, they support me, and yeah, and we, we become friends more than anything. So you can find all my, all my bow ties at Gaziano and Girling. You can also find my book. Otherwise, it's all online. If you want to come to my showroom, I'm based in East London, in Hackney, so I can welcome you and show you what I do. If you think about the dinner suit, you know, you have your black trousers, your black jacket, cummerbund or waistcoat, and you have your white shirt. The one thing that stands out that is against white is your bow tie. You know, it's easy to say as a bow tie maker. To me, it is the most important part of your black tie outfit. You can have a suit that's absolutely amazing, that's been made on Savile Row by bespoke tailors, and, you know, it fits you as well as it can. But if you don't have a bow tie that's up to the standards, your outfit is just not going to look as good as it should. And it's also the one thing that's the closest to your face. You know, it's a bit similar to the glasses. You've got to be very careful when you choose your glasses. You've got to think about the shape of them. You have to think about the reflection. You have to think about the material. And it's exactly the same with bow ties. You need to choose a bow tie that's going to complement your face rather than choosing something randomly. Um, so that's one, of, that's one of my new ones, so it's, it's called the Laurent. So it's something I imagine um, Yves Saint Laurent would have been wearing if he had been a customer of mine. So you don't want your bow tie to be coming too high on your neck, but you still want to have a decent you know, sized bow tie. So I designed it to be quite straight at the top and then to drop quite a lot. It has a nice curve to it, so it gives it a lot of fullness. I'm far more inspired by people from my community 
and by my customers as well. I have people asking me for all kinds of things and sometimes it takes me out of the box to design something that I wouldn't have thought about. If you look at someone wearing black tie and you think, wow, you look really smart, but you can't really say why, this is why people nail it. Well, since I started in 2011, I think that's been, that's really been the constant of my life. So wherever I was, whatever job I was doing, there was always this fil rouge that was following me um, and I was making bow ties. When it comes to the craft itself, it's just me. So I do all the designing. So every single shape is created by myself. I do all the cutting and I do all the making, the finishing. I think one of, one of the most important things is understanding who the person is who's coming to see me. I generally ask them to either bring a picture of their dinner suit and, you know, and, and a shirt, um, and then we'll go through the different, the different styles and then I can, you know, I can get a good, a good feel of what they are comfortable with. Yeah, 100%, 100%. You know, you can, you know, you can be extremely smart and wear shoes that are just not as smart and people are going to notice. You can tell when someone puts a lot of attention in the way they dress, the first thing is going to be shoes. But the one thing that I don't have, and I actually realized when I was writing the book, is I don't have a pair of black Oxfords. And I've never had a pair of black Oxfords. So I have, I have a lot of different shoes for black tie and all of them, as you might be able to see, they're slightly different from the classics. So I decided to, yeah, to just fill the gaps. But that's my pair of Oxford, isn't it? <laughs> we added some meal stacks at the back. You know, we, I can do with a bit more height, like a lot of people. It's the most classic black tie shoe you can possibly own. So anyone who's interested in black tie should definitely get a pair of black Oxford to start. Don't do it like me and get all the crazy stuff. Start with a pair of black Oxford. And also, you can, also, you can wear it for, you know, for, for business as well. It's probably the most versatile shoe that, that a man can have. But I've, I've always done things the wrong way around. It's been the same with suiting. Started getting all my crazy stuff and then years later you realise, I need a blue suit, don't I? And a grey suit. Yeah, same with black Oxfords. So I've got quite a, quite a wide fur and quite a high in step. So what we've done with this one is we've chosen a toe that's fairly square but not too much because you I wanted it to be in proportion to the size of my foot so nothing too round otherwise it would have it would have looked even bigger but nothing too extreme and too square either yes that's what you want to hear so you made both feet I appreciate it that's really nice so the good thing with a black calf is you can really get you can really get the toe to shine. You can show that you, you've made an effort for your black tie outfit and now your shoes actually shine properly. There we go. Happy? Yeah. I mean, they, they are great. I wanted something that's not too stylized, but also works with you know, the fact that I've got quite a, quite a white foot um, and just very simple lines, which is you know, coherent to black tie. You want everything nice, simple, and just understated. And I think that's what that's what this toe shape does. So I like I like having extra heels just to get one to get a bit more height. I think that always helps. And uh, the second thing, it really changes the silhouette of the shoe, so it looks more like a like a bespoke shoe, just because you get you get much more shape around the inside here. Now, especially when, when you go for something very classic, you still want it to feel special in a way. Even if the fit, the fact that the, the shoes actually fit me very comfortably is enough, I think adding this little detail takes it to the next level. I think when people delve into footwear and dress shoes, I think the, you know, it, it's the natural route is the Black Oxford would be, would be the first choice. Right, we'll just celebrate my first pair of Black Oxford with a special drink. 
Probably the most fitted one to black tie as well. Drink of party, just a glass of champagne. Santé. Thank you everyone for watching and thank you to the team at Gaziana and Girling for having me on the Shoe Talk series. I'll see you soon.